You know what I've learned over the last 12 months, 18 months? In life, the best help is no help. You might think like, what? What do you mean the best help is no help? I've asked a man for help and no one wants to help me. How can that be a good thing? Do you know why that's a good thing? Because it puts you in a position where you need to help yourself. It puts you in a position where you don't depend on other people. Obviously, there's certain situations where you might need someone else's help. You know, you might need surgery or a lawyer. You understand what I'm trying to say, innit? But there's a lot of situations that we are in right now and we're lazy with it. We don't want to do it ourselves. We want to rely on other people. I think it was David Goggins. Um, I think he holds the world record for the most pull-ups. Or someone beat that recently. But anyway, holds the world record for the most pull-ups and that. I think he holds like the world record. He did at one time for like the longest marathon or whatever. And he's like an ex-Navy SEAL or something like that. David Goggins. You know? Anyway, boom. He said the best help that he got was no help. Something along those lines. Nobody helped him when he asked for help and that. For real. Puts you in a position where you need to help yourself. So, books just dropped recently. Conquering Adversity by Jelani. Now, come on, man. Um, the link for the book's in the description box below. Isn't it? But go and check it out. Wrote the book. And obviously, I needed like an editor. You know, someone to proofread it, whatever. You know. So, I went on this website called Fiverr. And I found the guy, amongst others, but I decided to use this guy to proofread and edit the book or whatever. You know. Sent it off to him, came back to me. Whatever, you know. Done it for cheap as well. But it was cheap for a reason. My guy edited some parts, well, edited the book, uh, proofread it. Didn't do much changes to it. But he done some, he made some bits of the book a little bit better. But then on the flip side, he fucked up the rest of the book. So imagine, me, I'm a thorough person. I try and be as thorough as possible. So I wrote the book. I edited the book myself. Then I sent it off to someone to proofread and edit the book. He's brought it back to me. I've noticed that he's made some things better, but then he's fucked up some other things. So basically, I wasted my money. So then I had to go back and edit the book again. And then I had to proofread the book once I actually got the first prototype copy uh, created and sent to me, or whatever. Really. So, man's edited this book like three times. And I was thinking to myself, like, I should have just done it from the beginning myself. And now, maybe, obviously, it might have been a good idea to get someone who's a real, real, real professional to proofread and edit the book. Don't get it twisted. People who have read the book have said that book is fucking on point. Even the guy who proofread it. Um, and sent it to me, he said it was beautifully read, um, written. Even there was one gal I must have sent it to, I think she's based in America, because I was going to get either him or her to do it. And she was like, no, nah, that book is on fire, ain't it? Yeah. Just the, the page that she, the few pages that she read, she wanted to go and read more or whatever, innit? Yeah. Now, obviously, that's just a small portion of the book or whatever, innit? You never know, the book could not be as good throughout the rest of the book, and whatever, innit? So, man knows the book was, 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 was on point and that, but my man's just... Um, made some bits better and then fucked up the rest and that, it? So, you know what? I'd say, you know what? Fuck this, man. I'm just going to do it myself again. So, basically, I had to uh, re-edit the book another two times or whatever, it? Like he He's making mistakes on top of my mistakes and that. Like, that don't even make no sense. But, you know, if you write a book, you have to go back over it. You can't write a book, edit it yourself, send it off to a proofreader and then him... Edit the book, edit, edit the book, and then you get it back and don't read it. No, you need to read through the book yourself because at the end of the day, he's a human being. He can make little minor mistakes, whatever. Really, but the mistakes he made was mad. Really, so, you know, man, learn how to proofread and edit a book myself. And yeah, obviously, the book's not perfect because I ain't perfect. Yeah, I, I, you know, see, I ain't experienced in writing books or nothing like that. But trust me, it's done to a fucking high standard. Um, another scenario where not getting help has fucking benefited me. Like this scenario, this example is much better than this one with the book or whatever. Really. Like a man really learned something new. 
So boom, man was doing the cool renovations to the yard or whatever, innit? And I got some guys in to help me do some painting because, you know, like in your hallway, maybe you live in a house where you have a hallway, you know, like when you're walking down the stairs, there's a fucking high point where you can't get to it even using a ladder uh, because it's just too high or it's just too dangerous. So my phone up some guys, they came and done some painting or whatever, innit? And when I clocked how to get to the high points, I was thinking, I was wasting my money paying these guys to do some painting. A man just put a fucking paintbrush on top of a long stick and painted in the corners that are almost impossible to get to or whatever. So, boom, I was supposed to get the guys um, to come and tile my kitchen floor and that. I didn't know how to do no tiling or nothing like that. Then, boom. Then when a man gave me a price to do the tiling and that, I said, you know what, fuck this. Fuck paying the next man to do some tiling. I was going to get the whole of downstairs tiled. The man was going to charge me like 1400 1400 in labour alone, you know, to tile the whole of my downstairs. So that's the hallway, that's the kitchen, that's the toilet, which is... A man will just throw that in for free because it's such a small area. Uh, the living room and the dining room, which I'm sitting in right now. Because as you know already... Man's living room is fucking empty. There's nothing there apart from the Ras Club carpet. So the man told me 1400 1400 to for the labour cost just to tile downstairs. Now the tiles would have came up to about 1300 So we're talking about two grand seven, two seven, you know. I said to, I said, nah, fuck that. Fuck it. And I remember I was uh debating whether I was gonna maybe not do the whole of downstairs and just do the kitchen and maybe put lino you know that floor vinyl stuff that comes on a roll in the in the hallway downstairs and i'm i'm, I'm in an r and i'm in an r and whatever in it yeah and i went down to the shop to try and buy the lino but the size that i wanted weren't in the shop and they would have to order it and it's gonna take about four weeks so i said you know what, bunny and i came home and I was doing whatever I was doing for the day, innit? And then I decided, you know what? The next day, I'm going to go down to the shop. It's actually a carpet shop, but they sell lino. I'm going to go down to the shop and I'm going to buy this lino because I want to do it myself to save money. Uh, and I don't want to pay no one to do no tiling or whatever, innit? Yeah. Um, not for a big area like that. So I was just going to do floor lino, yeah? floor vinyl, whatever they're calling it. Boom. When I'm driving to B&Q, it's so quite like 15 minute drive. Something, something came in my head. I asked myself, what are you afraid of? Are you afraid to make a mistake? Are you afraid to mess up a tiling job? I said to myself, you know what? Fuck going to the shop to buy the lino, yeah? Take your Ras Clark self to B&Q. Go and buy a box of tiles. Lay one tile down and see how you get on. Just one tile. Just one tile. I said to myself, you know what? Go to the shop and buy one tile. What's the worst that's going to happen? You're going to mess it up. You're going to waste £20. And you know what? If you mess it up but you fall in love with the idea of having tiles and that, then you know what? Go and hire out a man to go and put down some tiles on that. So boom, man's gone. Got the tiles and that. Laid one tile, one tile, like, turn into two, three, four. Next thing you know, man's tiled the whole of the downstairs hallway. Months later, man's tiled the whole of the kitchen. Fast forward. Probably... I don't know, six months or whatever. Man's bought a property, bought a flat. Started renovating the whole place. Obviously, man's got the tiling skills on point. Whatever, so man's tiled the hallway downstairs and the kitchen and the bathroom and that. But man wanted to refurbish the whole of the bathroom. Bro. So that means removing the bathtub Removing the sink, removing the toilet, and renewing the whole thing. 
And again, I'm in an army. Should I get a man to do it? Because I don't know how to do this or whatever. And yeah, YouTube, yeah, it can, can help you. But it's different in the real world than just watching it on YouTube a little bit sometimes. Isn't it? Well, so man's going out, yeah, like phoning people, phoning man, bumping into man in like the wholesalers and that. Asking man, yo, like, well, not talking to a man that way, but asking a man, you know, uh, I've got this uh, little bathroom that I need doing or whatever. Innit? Can you help me out? Innit? Yeah. And time after time after time after time, man are saying, oh, I'm busy, I'm busy. I know it's bullshit. I know they don't want to do business with me. Now, don't get it twisted. It ain't no racist thing for two reasons. Like, one of the guys, well, maybe Asian people might be racist towards black people, but some, most of the guys, they're most white. They weren't reluctant to do the job because I'm a black man. It's got nothing to do with the colour or whatever. Yeah. They're looking at me and they're probably thinking, if things go bad, will this guy fuck me around or whatever? Innit? Yeah. And if he fucks me around, will it turn into a situation where I'm really going to, yeah, is this person going to fuck me around for money? Innit? So you ain't got nothing to do because I'm a black man, nothing like that. They don't give a fuck about that. They're just thinking, you know what, yeah, this is, might be a, this is a young guy, he might mess me around with the money or whatever. Innit? So you know what, I'd, I'd rather not have the drama or whatever. Innit? So, yeah, no one wanted to help me with doing the bathroom and that. So you know what, man went on to YouTube, man went to the bath store, like, you know, like them plumbing wholesalers and that, a man sought after advice and that. Next thing you know, man's fucking installed a new bath, a new fucking sink, brand new toilet and that. Nobody helped me. Nobody helped me. See, in life, yeah, when people reject you, when people don't want to help you, they're actually doing you a favour. But most of us, we don't, we don't, we don't, we won't, we won't see that. We don't realise that. They're doing you a favour. Think about it this way. I could have paid a man to take on my property, my flat. I could have paid a man to um, do the whole job or whatever, innit? have free time on my hands or whatever. Innit? And the, the property would have been completed a lot sooner than... It's not even complete right now. There's still a little bit to do in it. But the property would have been completed within a month if I paid someone to take it on or whatever in it but what have i learned from that you see every situation you need to try and learn something new you know what learning experience can you take from this situation yeah i've wasted time and i've wasted money but you know what i can't even call it wasting time i've invested time and yeah i've, I've lost out on a bit of money because i ain't had someone in the property renting i remember the mortgage continues yeah, when you ain't got someone in there, they don't tell you, oh, well, you can only, you, don't worry, it's all right, you, can, you, you pay the mortgage when you get someone in there. No, 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 no. You have to continuously pay the mortgage, whether you've got a tenant in the property or not. So, yeah, I've wasted a little bit of money, but you know what? I've learned, you know. Let me tell you something right now. Life isn't about getting guap, getting the most guap as fast as possible. It's about learning and sharing your knowledge. Don't think about getting guap fast, getting guap quick, quick butt mentality. You're thinking like a drug dealer. Man and gyal that think about quick bucks are the people them that fail. But you think all these drug dealers are all in jail because they got a quick butt mentality. But you think all these Caribbean shops that pop up in, in a Tottenham and a Edmonton, they close down within a year. There ain't no rascal like dust on the side outside the shop. You know why? Because they think quick buck mentality. They don't think, oh, you know what? For a whole year, we're gonna slightly undercut all the other um, shops around town or whatever in it, yeah, and get all the customers and obviously make sure the food is on point. That's the most important thing. No, nope, we're gonna charge and try and make a quick profit. ASAP. What they say, easy come, easy go. What comes fast goes quick. Drop the quick butt mentality. But yeah, rejection is a, is a good thing. Why do you think so many men are actually successful? Man ain't trying to be successful for the sake of being successful. Yeah, it might be a... A lot of men want to be successful. They don't even know why they want to be successful. I'll tell you why the man want to be successful. It's to improve the quality of women that they can attract. That's why a lot of men are successful. That's why... If you know a lot of guys, think about, especially if you're a guy as well, yeah? If you know certain men, 
that were in their 20s or whatever, innit, that were knocking down and chopping down a lot of gyal. See where they are now. A lot of them man there that just had gyal, they didn't even have to work for it or nothing like that. They didn't even have to do nothing to attract gyal or whatever, innit, because partly because they were always out on the scene or whatever, innit. Yeah, check where they are now. I guarantee you, them man, they're not in the best position. I guarantee you, they're probably living in a gyal's yard under her submission. But the man them that got rejected by a lot of girls and that, a lot of man, they're on point. Yeah, they decide, you know what, let me become the best version of myself. A lot of men don't have ambition from day one. Like me, I've always had ambition from day one. Even when I was in school, man, I used to buy and sell crisp and drinks from fucking 12 years old, 13 years old. But a lot of men, they, they get their ambition from getting rejected by women, which is a good thing. So yeah, yeah, not getting help, getting rejected. All them builder people that man approached, phoned up and that, they were rejecting me. You know what? Man's learned how to do it myself now. Even man's kitchen. I fucking changed all the kitchen doors and that. Changed all the rascal like, kitchen doors and that. So anyway. I thought I'd just share that one with you lot, yeah? Not getting help is a good thing sometimes. Because it puts you in a position where you have to help yourself. Do you know the reason why a lot of black people are so far behind? And a lot of people who believe in God are so behind. Because they're waiting for some higher power, i.e. the government for black people, or God for the God-fearing religious people. They're waiting for a higher power to set them free, to help them. No one ain't gonna fucking help you apart from your Ross Clark self. Don't rely on the government. Do you know why I'm in the position that I'm in now? Because man had no one to rely on it. I didn't have my mum to give me money. I didn't have no government to rely on to bust me on this or whatever. And I don't believe in God. So if you don't have, if you, if you can't go and get money from your parents then, and if you don't rely on the government to bust you and help you, and if you don't believe in God, well, the only option is to really help yourself. It's a coincidence, isn't it, yeah, that I'm in the position that I'm in and I have the mindset where, you know what, I'm going to go out and get it myself rather than rely on other people. And it's quite a coincidence that there's people out here who rely on their parents, God or the government to help them and they ain't on shit, they ain't got shit. Don't rely on no one, rely on yourself. Born alone, die alone. Be a self sufficient person. Me, I'm a self sufficient man as much as I can be. Obviously, when Nadia comes true, I, I don't do shit. When Nadia comes true, boy, do I even know what a cooker is or an oven or a hob? Man, don't even know how to make tea, really. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. That's the only time, man, yeah. I, I ain't self sufficient. When my girl's here, oh yeah, she has to do everything. She has to do everything. Well, big up Nadia for being a good, a good girl still. But yeah, don't rely on no one but yourself. Don't rely on no one but yourself. Anyway, videos are about to cut out now. Anyway, yeah. so that's gonna end it there, isn't it? Stay wise, you done now.